Barney, you gonna drop that? Barney? Are you gonna drop that glove, Barney? Barney, drop the glove. <laughs> Barney, Barney, drop that glove. Drop it, drop it, drop it. Hi everybody, it's Ian and Amelia from the Jessup's Academy team and we're back with a brand new episode about getting the best from your camera. This week we're going to be talking about a really important subject. Amelia, what are we going to be talking about? Focusing systems. Focusing systems, that's right. So if you've ever taken a picture only to find when you get slightly closer in or you zoom in on the actual back of the camera, you only find it's blurry, it can be really annoying, right Amelia? Yeah, it's really annoying. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're going to show you the best way to set your camera up for all different types of subjects, ensuring you get really sharp focus. Now Amelia, Fujifilm have kindly lent us a brand new camera. Which camera is it? The the XS10. <laughs> the XS10, that's <laughs> absolutely right, okay. So we're going to put the XS10 through its paces, but we're not going to be doing that on our own. We are going to be joined by our own family dog. His name is Barney. Come here, Barney. Ah, <laughs> totally ignores us most of the time. Come on, Barney. Come on, Barney. Come on. Ah, uh, you might there be able to see him run past. <laughs> Barney, come here. No, he's just Oh, he's run. just going to side lie there. Okay. Thanks, Barney. Okay, so you ready to get going, Amelia? Yes. Fabulous. Let's go. So if you've not already adjusted your focusing system, it defaulted to be fully automatic. Now the easiest way to break down your focus system setup is in the following two areas. Number one, how you focus, and number two, where you focus. Let's begin with how you focus. A majority of cameras will have a choice of settings, starting with a very automated one, usually known as AFA, AFF, or for most Canon cameras, this is known as AI focus. This setting judges whether the subject you're looking at is moving or static. It then decides the focus option to apply, to either lock on to a static subject like a landscape or still life, or continually update if the subject is moving. This mode is of course very useful if you're not too sure on what your subject is likely to do, for example with wildlife. You are of course then relying on the camera to make the right decision. The good news is you can also override this automation and tell the camera to focus how you want it to. This can be done by either focusing once and locking. This for most cameras is called AFS, SAF, the S in both cases standing for single, and for Canon cameras it's known as single shot autofocus. If the subject is moving, you can tell your camera to continually update the focusing, increasing your chances of a sharp picture. This is known as CAF or AFC, the C standing for continuous, and on Canon cameras it's called AI servo focus. This should be your go-to choice for anything that's moving. So once you have your focus method, it's time to look at where you ask the camera to focus. Normally, in auto, the camera will judge this for you. But of course, it doesn't always get it right. Being able to tell the camera specifically where you like the image to be in focus is sometimes absolutely key to the creativity of your shot. On the Fujifilm XS10 Amelia is using today, there are various options, starting with a very large area where the camera has a choice of all of its focus points. You can also be a bit more specific and choose a zone of focus points. This is really useful when focusing on larger subjects. You can also be very specific and choose one point, making your focus area very small. Perfect for when you want to isolate just one part of the image. Once you have selected your focus point, size or selected zonal, you can move it around with your camera's joystick, cursor or in some cameras you can even touch the screen. Finally, you can select to use manual focus. This allows you to rotate the focus ring of your lens and achieve focus yourself. Many cameras, just like the XS10, benefit from something called focus peaking. This is used when manually focusing. It's an overlay of color that will appear in the image shown in the viewfinder or the screen. It doesn't appear on the final image, of course. Here it's shown in yellow. And as the yellow color becomes prominent in the image, it tells you this is where the camera has achieved primary focus. Okay, so time to try this out with a very unpredictable subject, otherwise known as Barney, our 10 month old Goldador. Firstly, some shots using single AF. Amelia moves her focus point and locks on the face, ideally around the eye. In between pictures, she can move that focus point around to suit wherever the eye is in the composition. Time for something a little more challenging. Barney running after his ball. 
Amelia changes her focusing to continuous focus and uses the tracking feature on this camera to follow Barney. As you can see, combined with a faster shutter speed and continuous burst mode, it's done a fab job. Nice work, Amelia. Okay, so that's it for this week, guys. Uh, we do hope you've enjoyed it and also found it useful. Amelia, you've been using that camera all afternoon now. What do you like most about it? I like the film simulation and the speed of the camera. Okay, the film simulation is the speed of the camera. Fantastic. And uh, I think Barney's had a lovely time running around after his ball, don't you? Yes. <laughs> okay, so if you need help with your camera or your photography, then don't forget to check out jessops.com and go to the courses tab where all our courses are listed on there. We have them both online as well as face-to-face uh, -face and uh, day, full day courses. So uh, from Amelia, myself and Barney. Barney, you're going to say goodbye? You might be able to just see him run past. <laughs> Thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.